What's going on, Geminites? It's your boy, Gem Mint. We're here with another Omnibus review. This time, we're going to review the Silver Surfer Omnibus by Dan Slott and by Michael and Julie Allred. I'm a little bit torn on how I feel about this book, man. We're going to talk about it. I'm not going to mention any spoilers, but I'll start with my overall thoughts, and then we'll do like an aerial shot going over some artwork. And if you can see here, I kind of have some post-its on things I want to mention. But before we get started, I want you to hit that subscribe button down below, hit the notification bell, and if you enjoy the video, hit that like. So I say I'm torn. Uh, off top, I wasn't really a big fan of the artwork. It is inspired by like the 60s, by uh, Jack Kirby stuff, and I can get through the art. You know, I can kind of look past that. Um, it, it has a very kind of retro vibe to it, very kind of like um, solid color vibe, not a lot of detail. I personally like like overly detailed artwork. So this is very plain, but I mean, it has a lot of charm. There are definitely some proportions that are kind of funky to me that I'm not really into, but I was able to get past that and kind of uh, just enjoy the artwork for what it was. As far as the writing, the only thing I really read of Dan Slott was his Spider-Man run, which led into Superior Spider-Man, which I really, really liked. And it just feels very different here because not only is the artwork kind of childlike, kind of cartoon-like, I felt like the writing was very like juvenile at times, and I have some some pages saved here that's gonna kind of explain what I mean here. And a lot of times when I was reading this, I was kind of like, ugh, kind of like cringe, kind of like, I don't know. But with that being said, what's funny is that I found myself not wanting to put the book down, and when I would finish an issue, I would just jump right into another one. And you know, I kind of towards the end really had a really great appreciation for this run. Uh, there's definitely some high points in this book, even throughout in the middle uh, that, that we'll show here. So there was definitely some high points, some great stuff with Galactus, some great stuff with like Eternity and the Never Queen and kind of the Marvel cosmic mythos. So, you know, I can kind of see the lore of this book. So there's some nitpicky stuff and then there's some really good stuff in here as well. I mean, once you get towards like the last quarter of this book, you have some really emotional stuff here with uh, family, with time, kind of like interstellar kind of stuff happening. Um, and, and it really does pay off. The gist of this book, the plot, is you can see on the cover, Silver Surfer has this female that's kind of exploring the spaceways with him. Her name is Dawn Greenwood. Dawn gets abducted by aliens, and Silver Surfer basically saves her, uh, although she kind of has already saved herself. And then she wants to basically ride with Silver Surfer and explore the cosmos. And uh, that's kind of the premise of the whole book. There's not really an overarching story. There are some things, but there's a lot of issues that are kind of like literally titled That Time Silver Surfer and Dawn uh, Rescued a Puppy or something like that. So you know, you had a lot of, I don't want to call them fillers, but kind of like one-shot things that were within this run that remain canon and stay true until the whole story but I guess just little one-offs like that. I thought Dawn, the way she was written was the most cringe to me. I don't know, there was a lot of things that she was very naive. Uh, her expressions and her mannerisms didn't really match what she was saying and I thought there was like a disconnect there. She seemed to be very like one-track minded and it was everything was always her way. There was very little compromise, especially with like universe uh, ending stakes going on here. Uh, there, there is a fun little tie-in with like the end of the Secret Wars, uh, Jonathan Hickman run and kind of where they are during that time. Origins of Galactus was amazing. Uh, so a lot of ups and downs, but I think that's pretty much the gist of it without giving any kind of plot spoilers, which there aren't really any. But you basically have Silver Surfer and Don Greenwood duo tag team throughout this book. And uh, sometimes I liked it and sometimes I didn't. All right, so as you have seen, the cover of the dust jacket. What's funny is I really like the artwork on the cover, like as far as how Dawn looks and how Silver Surfer looks. I think they both look great. It's kind of like the surrounding characters that look a little awkward. I mean, starting with Galactus, it wraps around, and then you have these characters. Now, I really like the way they did Eternity and the Never Queen, but if you look at like Warlock, uh, Rocket Raccoon, Spider-Man, like Drax... Just such low detail, cartoony, like, I don't know, like, uh, Play-Doh looking characters that I'm not really digging. I mean, look at Agent Venom. That does not look like Agent Venom to me. And I guess, that, you know, the style really works for, like, Mad Men or maybe even Ecstatic. But, I don't know, I wasn't really digging it for 
these other Marvel characters. It kind of works for Surfer. Uh, when this came out, it had just a $75 cover price. It collects two volumes. Uh, this was originally issues 1 through 15. Then there was an all new Marvel Now Point One, and then the volume renumbered uh, and did 14 issues, all by the same creative team. So the actual hardcover uh, has the same image from the dust jacket, uh, but without any text or any trade dress. It looks really good. I mean, the colors are good. I like the purples. I like the pinks, and I, I like the cosmic aspect of it. Again, I do like Dawn and Surfer, just not really digging that. All right, let's jump into this here. So this is what I mean when I say, like, proportions. Like, I don't mind even, like, the the lens glasses look of his eyes, but uh, the proportions being kind of, like, um, Gumby style uh, proportions, I'm not really digging. Uh, this is an example here of uh, a planet, the in, the Empiricon. I don't, I don't really dig this artwork, you know, where it's kind of just, like, graffiti looking but for a comic book i'm not really digging it i do like the scale of surfer on the bottom here here goes don greenwood now what's really weird about don she always wears polka dots because she's a twin she has a twin sister eve and their parents put a yellow jacket on eve and put red polka dots on don but what's really weird in the entire first volume they always put the polka dots where it looks like her nipples and i'm like what because this book is very much so respect women, women's rights kind of vibe. So I'm just kind of surprised that they had that. And look, every single panel you'll see, like right here, right here. And sometimes it, it like really looks like her breasts. Look at this. So I was really surprised. And they must have caught on around the second volume of this. Because uh, they end up changing up the polka dots. But for this entire first volume, it's like that. And it's kind of like, once you see it, you can't unsee it. You know what I mean? Feels like an Avengers tie-in. Again, don't really like how the Avengers are drawn. Don't mind Surfer. You know, it's very Kirby-esque. You know, so I'm kind of down with that. Look, Polka Dots again. Super weird. So, yeah, so he, she, her tonsils are hurting. So he uses the Power Cosmic to remove him. But because he didn't ask her, it was a problem. It was like a violation. Which I could kind of see. But it kind of goes to show you their kind of views, right? And just weird that you're doing that. But you have what looks like nipples showing the whole time. Some of the space scenes, really dope, man. The artwork, I think, works for that. This is where they kind of travel to an area of space where there's no stars, and it's really cool. What do I have over here? So there's this kind of weird little scene right here, and I kind of like wonder, like, why was that even there? So basically, Surfer lets Dawn uh, ride the board and kind of drive. And we'll talk about the board in a second. So she crashes into a planet, and she says, look, it came out of nowhere. Surfers like Dawn, it's a planet. And she says, it was a very sudden planet. And he goes, a sudden planet? You people. So Dawn goes, hey. And he says, yeah, human drivers. And she says, oh, thought you were going to be sexist there for a sec. But I don't know if that's any better. I just wonder, like, why, was the, why were those two panels even thrown in there? It just seems kind of odd. Anyway, the board in this book is kind of like a like an animal, like a dog, like a pet. And they and because Silver Surfer always says "To me, my board," she thinks that the board's name is "To me," like T O O M I E. Which I didn't really like at first, but I got to be honest, I start, it started to grow on me a little bit. And he's kind of got like the board's kind of got like a personality. So I highlighted this panel because I really dug this. I thought this was a dope double page spread. You got Surfer here, this planet exploding. I think this was something to do with Galactus. Yeah, this whole slingshot issue was amazing. So even though I have problems with the artwork, like sometimes it really, really works. That's what I'm telling you guys. I was really torn on this book. Surfer vs. Galactus, pretty dope. So Dawn's always in the mix. She's in every issue. And, and she grew on me too, to be honest. I didn't like her at first. Look, polka dots again. What's going on with that? The Never Queen is dope. So the Never Queen is like the yin to uh, Eternity's yang. Eternity is everything past, present, future. And she's everything that would be, could be, or could have been, or something along those lines. And I really like the uh, the mythos surrounding that. See, they started changing up her polka dots here. Somebody probably finally caught on. An editor was like, wait a minute, why are we like, you know? 
So when you talk to the board, it kind of talks back with your reflection, but your reflection is doing something different. All right, a lot of traveling. Some of the covers are really great. I think I have one cover highlighted specifically. So this was one that I thought was really weird. So basically, Surfer goes to find Alicia... What's her last name? She, uh... From the Fantastic Four. Alicia. I forget her last name. And, um... Uh, it's kind of like for the fate of the universe type of thing. But Dawn makes this whole kind of jealous girlfriend thing out of it. Which was kind of like, really? Like... We're trying to save the universe here. Like, can you give it a break? I really like this cover, man. I like... They actually did it in the issue prior to uh, where they have all the covers, like, photoshopped in. You know, I'm a big fan of those Silver Age books and such. So I thought that was really cool. Got classic covers. FF48. You have Silver Surfer 4, Silver Surfer 1, FF50. Where's 48? I'm sure it's there somewhere. Anyway. I really like that. Oh, I missed something. Tell me if you guys like the bookmark thing. I'm, I'm kind of digging it, actually. Oh, this was super whack. So basically, Eve, they come back to Earth to check on the family. And her twin sister, Eve, is pregnant. She's got a new fiancé. And they have Norrin Rad silver down because he can do that in this book. And he puts on his clothes, which I guess are old clothes of his when he was in a baggy jeans phase. And they got Norrin Rad straight dressed like Eminem 8 Mile. Super cringy, man. Oh, this is the issue where... The kid pulls out the stack of comic books. That's that's pretty cool. They probably did that, and then for the next cover, they're like, you know what we should do? All right, what was this part? Why did I show this with Dawn? Both runs are basically Silver Surfer simping the hell out of Dawn. Just taking her wherever she wants to go, whatever she wants to do, taking her to planets that are full of puppies mixed with cats and bunnies and ball pits and cotton candy trees and kind of just really simping out the whole time <laughs> but you know what at the end i kind of feel bad because i'm not going to spoil it but towards the end of the book i felt bad for like judging like that you know what i mean because you know you got to treat the ladies right another kind of instance of what i thought was goofy they basically get swallowed up by this sea whale i mean i'm sorry space whale and it's a whole little issue like pinocchio or whatever and then when they leave <laughs> the whale goes bye bye <laughs> Like, you know, that just gives you an idea of kind of, like, the tone that this book has sometimes. It's, like, super juvenile. Again, and anytime they have Eternity, though, it's dope. I love how they did Eternity and Never Queen. They really nailed that. Here goes some more stuff with Dawn. So, I highlighted this issue. This entire issue 10 is amazing. I loved this issue. It was a Galactus issue. First of all, look at this panel, right? Amazing. This is around the time, I think, when did Galactus become the um, bringer of life? You know, it happened in another Marvel run, and they kind of just uh, used it for here as well. But the entire issue, and I'm going to show you a really cool panel with Eternity, man. And it's out of context, so you're not going to really know what it is. But with Eternity, yo, I just really love... This issue is when the book started to win me over, when I started to, like, get it, you know? It's really when they won me over here. So, good colors. I didn't really highlight any of the um, expressions that she would do and, like, mannerisms that didn't really go with the dialogue, but... Uh, I want to mention one thing, and again, I don't, I don't think this would be a spoiler because it's out of context, but basically Galactus was the last survivor from the old universe that crumbled then happens the big bang that starts our universe so they actually go back and we get to see Galen, which is the person who becomes galactus in his universe i thought that was pretty dope uh this is an example of you know i like how they do surfer even dawn even outer space but I, i'm not really digging how they do the other marvel universe characters On the back, we have some extras. Some, let's look at some variant covers and some unused covers. Scotty Young cover looks great. I like that, eating kind of cereal out of the earth. This cover looks good. I thought it was a Liefeld cover, but it's by Will Sliney and Dave McCaig. 
this is a pretty cool animal cover. You got sloth, silver sloth. You got the hip hop variant, uh, the Drake homage cover. Stan Slot storyboarding. Some designs for Dawn. An unused cover for number 12. That's a good cover. Here's the uh, wraparound cover for the Omnibus. Some sketches. That's pretty much it. All right, guys, those are my thoughts on the dance slot. Michael, Laura, All Red, Silver Surfer, Omnibus. A lot of people really praised this book, and I can see why people liked it, but again, I was a little bit torn. There was a lot of stuff I didn't like, but I still uh, enjoyed reading the whole book. I'm glad that I finished it, and uh, yeah, it, it, it kind of does pay off at the end. I want to hear your thoughts on the Omnibus in the comments below. I know that it's sold out and that it's kind of like on a whale status. Uh, it was teased to come back online, but then that was a mistake. So people kind of got their hopes up, which is kind of what made me want to read this. And this was also on the uh, what uh, which book should I read next video that I put out like a month or so ago. So this is the third book from that video. We We did the Gotham Central, Fear Agent, Silver Surfer. I think I'm going to jump back over to DC and do the Zero Hour Omnibus now. Uh, and I kind of want to read some manga. I want to really try to jump into that Vagabond. I have uh, volumes 13 through 20 of Berserk coming in, so I'm going to rip through those as soon as they come through. But any suggestions or recommendations for recent reads, drop those in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, like I said, hit the like and hit the gem to the left to subscribe to the channel. Hit the playlist to the right for more Omnibus reviews. Thanks for watching. You guys stay minty fresh. Peace.